gesture for protecting against evil spirits. So certain gestures, you know, they do change meaning over time. That's not necessarily universal, right? What gesture vocabulary we're using. Other things, on the other hand, like you know, if you have a big head, you probably are important. <laughs> so certain things definitely are more universal design principles. They're not going to change over thousands and thousands of years. Uh, or in this case, this is from the Las Vegas airport. Uh, a perspective view, you know, like what am I going to get? Tell people before they get there so they can kind of navigate correctly. Uh, these are really universal principles. Or which of these kitchen timers is going to be actually easy to use, right? It's, uh, it's going to be the one with the, with the big numbers you can actually read, no matter what glasses you're wearing that day. And the ones that are left, we actually bought it, but it's a terrible monster to, to use. And if you want to uh, cook three different things, right, then you have the extra feature set, but basically it's no good. So a lot of these things, usability, are stuff that, that we kind of know about. And of course, it does apply to not just to to digital things. I was also by at the conference here, there was a great paper by Health Immobile, the problems with this actual font they're using here for the numbers, so it's not perfect either, but that one on the right is definitely much easier. And uh, we could run studies on it, or we can just even kind of just look at it here, we'll tell. So we've done studies of, of a lot of you know, websites and software and all, but also of other things. I'm going to show you. Like I said, the, the way it looks is real intimidating. But I, I, I would be open to trying it. sort of, kind of, sort of consider this, but only if I lost or misplaced the one I have now. <laughs> so again, I mean, usability methods like user testing and usability principles apply to all this other type of stuff as well. So, and, and also, there's a, I mean, there's a, we did this as part of the Emotional Design Project, but it also, there's also like a standard old-fashioned usability problem there as well, which is how do you get rid of the core? And there's a trick to it but almost nobody ever figured that out on their own. We went through a lot of wine in that project. <laughs> and yes, almost none of the users figured out how to get the cork off of the, of the cork screw. So when I say we know things about usability, a lot of the things we know, uh, you know, we keep repeating it in study after study after study. I'll show you, this is a slide from my first uh, lecture on, on website usability as opposed to other types of usability. So we had tested uh, the IBM website and found that Users really like this feature of having a small photo of the product and then you can click on get a big photo of the product. So this day, this is one of our guidelines for e-commerce websites. And, uh, you know, I mean, it certainly doesn't look like that anymore websites, right? But this guideline that you want to have a small photo first so you can get overviews of different things. Then you want to have a big photo, you can see the detail of the product. Those are inherent you know, pr properties of that, that shopping scenario. And so we tend to see the same, the same thing uh, that we found in study in 94, we find a study today. A lot of people say when they kind of read about these usability findings, well, but surely, you know, because you found something 10 years ago, I mean, it doesn't apply today clearly with all the development we have in technology. No, technology doesn't matter that much. You know, it doesn't matter if it's in Mosaic or it's in Netscape or it's in Chrome or whatever, uh, these things are the same. Here's uh, an example of a study uh, before the web in Hypercard. So um, we took it into uh, study with a bunch of five-year-olds. This is a non-verbal hypertext with the ex explorationist cat that goes on adventures. And the way it works is that uh, you basically click, like you click on the tree if you want the cat to climb the tree, or you click the road if you want the cat to run along, click the bushes if you want the cat to play in the bushes, and you choose a different number of kids who click different places. But but then this one screen here, down to the right, works differently. All, all screens in this children's story work on that kind of third-person metaphor that you click where you want the cat to go. The, the one screen works in a second-person metaphor, which is to say that if you click where you want the cat to run, it doesn't run there. You've got to like push the cat. 
move your kid. That's a different navigational metaphor. You can see the kids, they, they click here. Now, because it was five-year-old kids, you know, they just kept clicking until something happened. So eventually they clicked the cat and it ran along. But this notion of, being, of having an inconsistent user interface, of changing navigational uh, you know, metaphors in the middle of, of uh, the navigation is a usability problem. And uh, we could find it in HyperCard in um, 89, we can find it on the web today. Uh, so a lot of these things tend to be the same, which is why I didn't want to point out we know things about usability. We have accumulated and, and uh, you know, designed against this as your peril. Um, I'll show you another example of a, of a study we did uh, 10 years ago of a user who's trying to uh, play the movie trailer for this film, The Incredibles. The problem here is the clickability of Fortin, so let's try to see what happened with this user. But it has a trailer, so let's click on that so we can watch it. Um, how do I get it to play? Um, quick time. Hi, Mr. Support. So we're completely. Oh, wait, download the free player. Oh, this is. They do not look clickable, these guys here. <laughs> Download the free player select the operating system. I'm thinking this is not, this might be where I need to be to play that trailer, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to buy anything or enroll in anything. Download the free player. Let's try it. <laughs> <laughs> Disney, let's check under Disney. Do not look like a bully. Do not look like a bully. Come back to the screen. Let's go back. Okay, you guys can watch it. This is visit the official site. It does not look clickable. She types it in. plays on, I'm going to click on Windows Media because Windows is the only thing that sounds familiar to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the download center. <laughs> Sponsored things and photos, official movie website, Walt Disney Studios. <laughs> She was never able to watch it. Um, <laughs> now, the, the reason I like this video clip is because we see the same problem like again and again and again, right? Usually when people make a mistake on websites, they're like, boom, blow them out of the water and they never return to any decent place. But here she was very lucky because this film was like advertised so heavily that she kept being getting the second and a third and a fourth chance, which is very rare. And yet every time, 
So you were slammed down by this one problem, which is clickability of forums. Can you tell where you can click? And so you can kind of just imagine being in a design meeting when they designed this, this website here. And, and maybe if there was a usability person there, they would have said, you know, uh, these links here to play, play the video have a poor perceived affordance. They, are not, they don't kind of quite look like you can click there. And then like everybody else in the room would, would, would say, depending on how hostile they were to usability, I said, I'll just shut up. <laughs> or they would say, if they're good, they would say, yeah, you may be right on that, you know, but surely people can figure it out you know, very quickly. And that's the problem, because surely she could not figure it out. She got many chances, and she never did figure it out. And, and so, same for many other people. Now, some people, yes, like probably everybody in this room, if we take a time machine 10 years back, and we came across this screen, we might be stuck you know, for a second, pausing, where can I click? Oh, yeah, I can click here. And so everybody in the design meeting would, have, of course, be at that level of, of, of insight and uh, would be able to do it. Uh, so we really have to think about this broader set of people and we cannot just, uh, just say, well, surely they can figure it out uh, because you can figure it out. Uh, also, it's interesting because I was not, my kind of theme here is we know things about usability that we, these guidelines we need to, to, to keep uh, thinking about. Well, the video, the clip I showed also shows some examples of things that do change. Like in this case, how do you play a video, a video clip on a website? Well, today this is much easier to do because of some, some progress in the, in the design of how you play video clips. And so we wouldn't have this exact problem today because it would be an easier way to play, play a video. But many other places we, we, we test, we still see the general problem of people not knowing where to click if it doesn't have a good clickability affordance. 